Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions and welcome to this uh, very basic tutorial in animating in After Effects. Now you can find some of this information in a broader tutorial that I made in learning After Effects in 20 minutes. Now that tutorial, which you can find uh, here and also in the description, covers pretty much most things that you need to know to uh, get started in After Effects. Okay, so once you have After Effects open, go under Composition and create a new composition. Now you can name this composition whatever you uh, you like, title animation and you can also select what kind of uh, resolution you want your composition to be so you have a couple presets here that you can pick from uh, but if you know the actual pixels you know you can type them in here then you have your frame rate here uh, you have presets to pick from here and then you have your duration and so you have hours minutes seconds and frames so as you can see if I were to hit OK right now our composition would be 30 seconds which is perfectly fine so let's hit OK and now we have a new full HD 30 second long uh, composition. The first thing that we're going to do is create a new background for, uh, for our text to appear. So I'm going to right click in my uh, timeline panel here and go under new and then click on solid. So you can see that it's the same resolution as our composition and if not you can make sure it's make comp size and you can select the color of our solid. You know you can make it any color that you like. I'm just going to pick white. Click OK and click OK again and now we have a white solid in our uh, composition. One quick thing that you could do instead of just having like a blank white solid just to make it a little bit more interesting you can actually uh, type in here uh, ramp and this effect is pretty cool if you just drag it onto the layer either here or here you create this little nice ramp effect and you can change the colors here. Now I know I'm sidetracking a little bit but you know let's just uh, Let's make our stuff look good. Maybe we can do uh, white for this one, maybe. Boom, there you go. So it's a little less boring than just a white uh, background. All right, let's create our text. And um, you can do that by just uh, clicking on this text tool icon. And then you click back into your composition. And you can type in animation. Let's go with that. Now that text is a little hard to read. So what we can do is uh, we can actually go here and change the color. You can see that these are the character uh, parameters. If we're going a little too fast, it's just because this is specific to animating. I don't want to waste too much time on anything else. But if you do want to learn more uh, on getting started with After Effects, or if you're having a hard time with just following all these steps, definitely check out the tutorial I mentioned before, uh, Learn After Effects in 20 Minutes. Okay, so we have our text layer here. And, you know, we can move this around by just dragging it around our, uh, our composition here. But to actually animate this, we need to uh, we need to see the different parameters that we can animate. So if you expand this by uh, clicking on this uh, arrow looking uh, icon here, you can expand the transform properties you know the same way, and you can see that we have our anchor point, our position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Uh, another quick way to access all of these is if you select a layer, you can hit P on your keyboard that will bring up position. R on your keyboard will bring up rotation. S on your uh, keyboard will bring up scale. T for opacity and A for anchor point. Okay, so we'll go over all of these individually. Now the anchor point is the first thing that uh, we're gonna cover and it's, it's pretty important because it will definitely affect the way your animation will look. This is the anchor point right here. It's this little crosshair uh, that's uh, sitting on the left side of your, of your text right now. And if we actually rotate this, you can see that it's rotating around that point. So let's say we don't want that. Let's say we just want this text to uh, animate around its center. Well, what you want to do is select the anchor point. And you can't just click it because it will just move the layer around. So what we need to do is click on this icon, which is the anchor point tool. And now, if we click on it, we're allowed to move it wherever we want. So I'm just going to put it roughly on the center here. And a quick shortcut for the uh, anchor point tool is hit Y on your keyboard. So whenever you hit Y, if you're on the regular cursor here, if you hit Y, it'll bring that back up. All right, so now that we have our anchor point wherever we want it to be, you can see that if I animate this, now it's rotating around that anchor point. Okay, so down the list, we find position. Now, position is pretty self-explanatory. It's just where the layer is going to be in your composition. And uh, as you can see, as I'm dragging this around, these two set of numbers change. What those two set of numbers are, are the X and Y coordinates of where this layer is. So depending on where I'm placing this, 
these values change. Next up is the scale, and this is pretty much just how big or how small you want your layer to be. So just by uh, you know pushing this up or pushing this down, or even by selecting, again, all these parameters you can click on and select them and type in whatever property you want. And it's a faster way of doing it if you have a specific uh, size in mind. Rotation, we pretty much went over that already. It just uh, rotates the, the layer. And then we have our uh, opacity. And what opacity is, is pretty much how transparent your layer is. So right now it's fully opaque. It's 100% opaque. But if we bring this to 0%, it's fully transparent. And this is, uh, you know, this is used for having uh, elements or clips fading in and out. All right, so now that we know what everything does, it's, uh, it's time to animate it. And uh, you know, if you mess around too much and you want it back to uh, how it was, you can always hit reset here. And uh, this will reset all of these parameters. But um, we don't really want that because it'll also reset our anchor point. So let's just reset all of these um, other parameters individually. So what you can do is you can actually select them and right click on them and hit reset. So now you can see that our position is reset. If I do the same thing with our scale, you see that our scale is reset. And for rotation, our rotation is reset. So now we have it back to how we originally had it, except for the anchor point, which is now in the center. So what we're going to be doing is a, uh, a animation similar to uh, the one that we saw in this example. So we're just going to have it pop up. And to do that, we're actually going to select this stopwatch looking icon. So we're going to go for scale, select that, and now you're going to see that a diamond looking shape has been created in our timeline. What we've done is we've actually created our first keyframe. And what a keyframe is, is pretty much After Effects making note of uh, the values for this parameter at this point in time. So right now we have it to 100, but we want it to actually pop up out of nowhere. So what we want to do is select this and hit 0. So right now it's so tiny we don't even see it. It's just pretty much not there. And if we move forward in time, let's say to roughly around 1 second, we can actually bring this back to 100. So now we see it again. Believe it or not, with those two simple steps, we already created our first animation because we told After Effects our point A and our point B. So if I go back, now we see that we have that animation coming in. So again, we just told After Effects where to start and where to end, and After Effects pretty much figures out everything in between. So let's say this is uh, this ends a little bit too abruptly. It looks a little bit too uh, too much of an animation from the 80s or 90s. Well, what we can do is we can actually select the uh, ending keyframe, and if you right click on it and you go under keyframe assistant, you can easy ease the keyframe. So if you select that, you can see that our, uh, our keyframe has actually changed shape. It goes from a diamond to uh, this kind of hourglass looking shape. Now if I preview this again, you can see that it's, it's very subtle, but the animation actually comes to a stop. Instead of just stopping abruptly, it actually kind of slows down to a smooth stop. So depending on the type of animation that you're doing, this can be really, really useful. All right, so moving on, uh, as you can see, all these other parameters have that same stopwatch. Whenever you see that icon in After Effects, it means that that parameter can be animated. And a lot of things in After Effects can be animated. So if we wanted to, we can actually have this uh, fade in. So let's go to the beginning here. And uh, we're going to create a new keyframe by hitting the stopwatch of opacity. Now, we don't want to see it in the beginning, so we need it to be transparent. So we click that, and we hit 0. So right now, if I play this, nothing appears to happen because our layer is now transparent. We need a second keyframe to tell After Effects to have it fade in. So let's go around uh, the middle of our, of our uh, scale animation, and let's bring that back up to 100. So as soon as I hit Enter, you're going to see that we created a new, new keyframe because we moved to another point in time, and we've changed the value of this parameter. So After Effects automatically creates a new keyframe. So now... If I preview this, you can see that 
the text actually fades in. Now another cool thing about animating, if you think that this is, uh, maybe this is a little bit too quick, you want to have a little bit more dramatic and you want to really see that, um, that fading in animation, what's really cool about After Effects is that you can actually stretch the animation out just by clicking and dragging the keyframe out. You can see that our animation is a lot slower now. Just a quick side note, whenever you hit spacebar to uh, preview what you're doing, sometimes it's not real time. Uh, if you see this green line and it's playing when that green line is there, that means it's real time. But whenever you get to anything gray, that means it hasn't rendered it yet, so it might not be real time. To avoid that, you can just hit ramp preview, which is this, uh, this button up here. So it'll render it first and then it'll show you, uh, it'll show you the animation in real time. Okay, so let's get crazy. Let's actually have this text uh, maybe move around a little bit. So what we can do is uh, select the stopwatch on the position. You can see that at this point in time it created a new keyframe. And uh, we can move forward and we can even now um, drag this up here. And you could, you could do the same thing by, uh, you know, putting in some numbers or even just kind of playing around with this, you know, just pushing it up and down or uh, from side to side. So as you can see, it created a new keyframe. And uh, what we can do is also, you know, just have that animation go further. You know, I'm just going forward in time and just moving this around. And if I play all of this back, again, to get a accurate uh, playback, we can do ramp preview. So it'll render this out first. So right now it's playing back. You can see that we created this, uh, this text kind of floating around. So think about, um, think about keyframes as uh, telling After Effects to have that element hit certain marks. So it goes from mark one to mark two, then to three, and then to four. Whenever your element hits a keyframe or hits a mark, you not only see it in your timeline, but you also see it in your composition panel. If you see this line, this is pretty much the trajectory that your element is, uh, is, is doing. And Whenever you see these little boxes, well, these are the keyframes that you've created. A cool thing about this is that you can actually select the keyframes through your composition panel, and you can change, you can alter the direction or the path of your, uh, of your element. So notice that as I'm selecting these different keyframes here, you can notice that in the timeline panel, uh, the keyframes that I'm selecting turn into, uh, into gold. Now another quick little thing is that you can see that the path kind of curves around these different keyframes. If you don't want that, if you just want the text, you just go straight here, straight there, straight there. You can actually hit Command Alt on your on your keyboard, and whenever you get closer to a keyframe, if you click on it, you can see that it creates a straight line to it. So as you can see, if I hit play, it goes straight to that mark, then straight to the other one and then straight to the end one. So this is kind of like uh, one of those old desktop screen savers. Uh, they might actually still have some where the text or your name that you type in or whatever just kind of bounces around the screen. So uh, that's pretty much what that does. And again, to undo that, you can just, uh, you know, Command, Alt, and go back to that and, you know, bring that curve animation back in. Now let's say you just like this text just coming in, but you don't like all this floating around stuff that it's doing later. Well, what you can do is you can actually select the keyframes. You can select one or even more than one by clicking and dragging. And you can hit delete on your keyboard and it will delete those keyframes. You know, you can select them individually and hit delete or you can make a group selection and delete them. If you want to delete all keyframes for a certain parameter, you can just select the stopwatch again. And once I do that, let's say for opacity, if I click on that, you can notice that all the keyframes disappear on my timeline. So now we're back to just a scale coming in. All right, guys, believe it or not, that is all there is to animating in After Effects. But as you can see in the original example is uh, that the text actually changes color. And uh, this is really, really simple to do. As I said before, a lot of properties can be animated in After Effects. And if I uh, go under the effects and presets, and I look for uh, an effect, let's say uh, tint effect. So if I type that in, tint will come up. And if I click and drag that onto our text layer, either here or here, now we have a tint effect. And as you can see, that very familiar stopwatch 
is uh, also next to these uh, these parameters here. So right now it's uh, it's tinting this layer black and white. Obviously it was already black, so you can't really uh, tell the difference. But let's say we change this to red. You can see that now our text is uh, is red. Now notice there's a property here that's called amount to tint, and um, 100% means that these two colors are affecting this layer, and 0% means that these two colors are not affecting this layer at all. So a cool way to have this effect come in is uh, you can actually, you know, maybe once it settles, you can have the amount of tint. So you click the stopwatch over there. It created a keyframe, uh, which you can't see right now, but it's because it's under the effects now. So if I expand the effects and the tint property, you can now see the keyframe here. And I'll move forward a couple seconds, and now I can push that all the way up to 100. So now, if I RAM preview this, we see the uh, we see the text coming in, and then once it comes to a stop, it fades to red. Now, a quick little shortcut to bring up uh, the keyframes instead of wasting space like this when you just really want to focus on the animation, you can just collapse all of this by again hitting that little thing here. And uh, with the layer selected, if you hit U on your keyboard, it will bring up all the parameters that have um, keyframes to them. So instead of expanding the whole thing down and finding, you know, what you're animating, if you just hit U on your keyboard, it will bring up anything that has keyframes to it. All right, guys, I hope I didn't put you uh, to sleep. I do realize that, you know, learning the basic stuff of After Effects can be pretty boring sometimes. If you think outside the box, you can apply this to pretty much anything, you know, uh, animation can be really cool. You can even animate cartoons into After Effects. So again, there's a lot of possibilities when animating in After Effects. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If it was a little bit too boring and you want to get to more exciting and advanced stuff, I do have a lot more tutorials on my channel. Check that out. But again, if you are still struggling with After Effects, definitely check out my uh, longer tutorial, Learn After Effects in 20 Minutes. That pretty much just uh, gets you on track to uh, learn more exciting stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, please hit like. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And I have a lot of stuff coming up. Short films, visual effect shots, and a lot of more tutorials. I might do a couple more basic tutorials. But as always, if you have any suggestions for any future video tutorial, please comment below. I, uh, I really try to reply to every single comment I get. But anyways, thanks again for watching. My name is Chris Green for Chris Core Productions, and I will see you next time.